Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Representative Jamal Bowman encouraged Democrats to up their support for Trump prosecutor and New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg, saying critics of Bragg are racist as hell. Take a look. We as Democrats have to get Alvin Bragg's back. And we need to speak out about that. We need to surround our brother, especially the Congressional Black Caucus and black Democratic leaders from across this country. We need to surround him because since the very beginning, they were mischaracterizing him, calling him out his name and being racist as hell to Alvin Bragg. And I know I deal with it directly. I legitimately cannot think of a single incident of maybe anyone besides a random Patriot MAGA Eagle 123 on Twitter saying anything racist about DA Alvin Bragg. It's uh, closely associated with the appeal to heaven flag, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, look, this is not, I mean, whether you agree or disagree with what Alvin Bragg's doing, it's just not like a racial issue. So this is a pretty, um, I would say, obnoxious adaptation of identity politics language where, like, you must support. I I think, frankly, even people on the left get annoyed, some of them, when this happens. Um, uh, My co-host at Rising, Brianna, often complains when Democrats are just, like, expected to vote, or, or, or black people are expected to vote for a specific or support a specific Democrat just because they happen to be black and she'll like, well, what are, are their issues actually speaking to what we want? Are they actually committed to, you know, the policy agenda she has? I don't agree with that policy agenda, but that's a perfectly fair question. It's, it's just always a surface deep identity politics kind of mode. Um, and, and the idea that like what black people are going to be specifically animated or interested in voting for Democrats because of the the hush money prosecution type deal, like that's an important issue. Like, no, it's the same. Polls show that specific identity groups have the same concerns with Biden and Trump and the political landscape that everyone else does. People are furious about inflation. They're worried about immigration. They, ha- it's, it's the same big picture items for everyone. When you look specifically at like young progressive college or su- supposedly progressive college students, who, who you know, no, student debt's not their top issue. The, the uh, even like Gaza's not their top issue, despite what you see from the activists. No, it's the economy sucks. That's everybody's top issue. There's no way around it. Democrats wish there was a way around it. Uh, if a Republican was in charge, they'd wish there was a way around it. That's what people care about. And just anecdotally, when you see some of the man on the street videos of the interviews with uh, like black residents of the Bronx or Manhattan, because Trump did a, a rally in the Bronx recently, they actually expressed the same deep distrust of the judicial system where they were saying, you know, uh, this feels kind of familiar to us that this guy is getting an unfair rigged trial, that he's got a jury totally against him, a judge against him, a DA against him, and you can't even really articulate what the underlying crime supposedly was, and you can't explain the machinations of exactly what the jury is supposed to find in the jury instructions. Like, you hear all of these people identifying this legitimate injustice that's occurred against this man and kind of connecting it to their own experiences. Right. I mean, that's a that's something um, critics of the criminal justice system, supporters of criminal justice reform uh, on both the, the left and the right. I, the, you know, at, at, uh, at Reason, we have uh, people who write a lot about criminal justice issues who will point to um, a certain amount of unfairness in the, in the system in terms of the power that prosecutors have to bring charges, uh, mandatory minimum sentencing, um, standards of evidence. You know, so many people plead guilty before they go to trial because the threat of, uh, of if you actually go, you, you could be so screwed by the system, you don't even want to risk it. Um, the, the, the state has like a lot of power. You know, you look guilty when you're sitting in the, you know, in the defense area. Um, that, that's a, and then, of course, the racial aspect of it. That is something uh, liberals have talked about uh, and, and others, uh, libertarians have talked about it to some degree too, that the, the system has disadvantaged uh, minorities and poor people in, you know, very, not across the board, but in some ways, uh, that's a fair thing to say. So the idea that like, you know, that, that this specific, um, that you'd expect this identity group to root for the prosecutors actually flies in the face of what 
um, of what progressives have generally been saying about the criminal justice system for like aeons. Yeah, I mean, like of valid points they've made about the criminal justice system that I agree with. The idea that they would identify with the district attorney because he's black obviously is yeah. is not consistent with just general attitudes towards the justice system. I mean, we saw this with Kamala Harris, right? Yeah. Her campaign was tanked during the Democratic primary in 2020 because she got called out by Tulsi Gabbard for her history as Kamala the cop, right? Yeah. Being this very aggressive uh, DA and then attorney general in California where she was very strict on marijuana offenses, she was very strict on truancy laws, and people didn't feel like she was representative of their community for whatever reason, and she, despite- she had no support among the community. No, none, and despite being the pick of the DNC, we saw Joe Biden, who has said pretty explicitly racist things, yeah. garner more support from black Democrats than Kamala did. Yeah. And she, then she, of course, she called him out for that. Remember, I was that kid, Joe. And then it's like, but he picked you to be his, his VP and you're fine with that. And she's like, oh, that's just all politics. Yeah. It's, there was an insincerity to, uh, frankly, everything about her, which is why she's having uh, uh, difficulty asserting that she should be the successor to Joe Biden whenever that comes into play. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll have more free media next week.